cataractcoach.com. Why am I performing stop and chop? If fake with chop is so amazing, then why do stop and chop? Hey, cataract coach, I got a question for you. You're always talking about fake with chop this and fake with chop that, but how come there are some cases where you still perform stop and chop? What's up with that? Well, let's be frank here. You should know how to perform all techniques of nuclear practice, all of them. I know all the techniques, I promise you. And there are a certain number of cases where stop and chop may be better than fake chop. Why? Well, think about it. Here's an eye. Look how shallow the anterior chamber is. I know it's hard to appreciate in 2D, but this is a patient with a very shallow anterior chamber. The patient's anterior chamber is a little bit less than 2 millimeters deep. The patient also is very hyperopic. The patient is going to get a 29 diopter lens. So using a diamond keratome here to make that incision will make a nice small incision, about 2.2 millimeters. That diamond keratome is about 1.8. It's a very tiny keratome. And now watch as I do the rexus. You'll really appreciate how shallow the anterior chamber is. So the, the reason I want to do a stop and chop on a case like this is there's one advantage. Remember, if I chop a nucleus in half with phaco chop, What's the size of each piece? 50%, 50%, right? You split the nucleus in half. But if I use a stop and chop technique and I use the phaco probe and I dig out a central trench, I sculpt a central trench in the nucleus, that's, you know, two phaco tips in width. And then I split the nucleus in half. What's the volume of each half? Maybe 40% and 40%. Or 45% or 45%. You've taken away a lot, some of the bulk from that central dense endonucleus. And so in a case like this, where it's a hyperopic eye, a big nucleus, a shallow anterior chamber, it gives you a little more working room. So there is an advantage there. So yes, I love phaco chop. I want you to be a phaco chop master. When you do phaco on my eye with a normal AC depth, I want you to do phaco chop. But in a case like this, where it's a tiny eye with a shallow anterior chamber, hyperopic eye, I want to do phaco stop and chop. And watch, watch this. Look at the probe knot. I don't go bevel down, I go bevel up. Let's get a groove going. So I'm sculpting a central groove here. And notice how I make the groove double width. I widen the groove right off the bat. It's not just one tip wide. It's, it's as wide as two tips. Why do I do that? Because to debulk the central nucleus more. I want to take out about 15, 20% of the nucleus through that groove. So that the remaining nucleus is going to be smaller. Each half is less than 50%. Now I can split it. Look at that. Propagate that chop all the way through. There you go. I got two halves. And now we can use the uh, FACO with high vacuum to chop. Bring those pieces up. Try. Can I get that piece up? Yep, 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 yep. And chop it. So definitely, you have to know all techniques of nuclear fractus. And even if you are a master at phaco chop, you got to still know how to do stop and chop and divide and conquer and everything else. I mean, think of this as basketball. If you're playing, you know, pick up basketball, you got to know kind of all techniques, not just slam dunks. You got to know some layups, some alley-oops, some three-pointers, all the above. And so you've got to know for cataract surgery all the techniques. This is your domain, right? So taking out that nucleus, look at that. Pow, it's gone. Cleaned up nicely and efficiently. Minimal amount of phaco energy. By the way, this is one of our complete cataract cases. You're watching a whole video start to finish. And I'm taking my time. Yes, it is true. I am a slower surgeon now. 22 years after my training than I was five years after my training. Because I used to be naive. Five years after my training, I thought that speed meant a lot. It turns out, no, no. Beautiful surgery and perfection with a high degree of safety and a high degree of precision, that means a lot. So I have actually slowed down my technique. Yeah, it's six, seven minutes for this case, but it's a beautiful outcome. And I want you to kind of take that same pride in your work as well. So you can see here, filling up our capsule bag, we'll polish up that anterior capsule room a little bit more. Let's get that big lens in the eye first. There's that cohesive visco to fill up that capsule bag. 
and we're going to bring our lens over here. It's one of these preloaded lenses. It's going to be a little bit of a tight fit because it's a higher diopter power. So watch this. We won't be able to get the tip fully in the eye. Look how we're just going to abut the incision instead and then deliver that inside the eye. And we can't get the, incision, the injector tip all the way in the incision, again, because it's a higher diopter power. And for these preloaded lenses, when they come in higher power, like this 29 diopter, they come with a little bit larger tip. So I had to do that kind of wound assist technique. Here using the chopper to clean up some of that anterior capsular rim material. And then we'll use the FACO or the IA probe to aspirate and clean up and polish that undersurface of the capsule rim. So first let's get the viscoelastic out from behind it. And that looks pretty reasonable. There you go. Here for this, I'll use a higher flow setting. And now I can polish the undersurface of that anterior capsule rim. I know you guys are waiting about that. So we, we, we get the hater comments all the time explaining how, you know, the, the uh, Super Bowl, you know, armchair jockey is better than the actual player. So cleaning up the viscoelastic here, cleaning up that anterior capsular rim, beautiful outcome here. I'm really happy with this. Patient had a beautiful case, beautiful outcome, great vision, very, very happy. And so I want to emphasize to you, yes, I love FACO chop, but you know what? You still got to be a master stop and chop. Because a case like this, look at this beautiful outcome with stop and chop. And I did that because it's the best for this patient. Tailor your surgery to your specific patient to give every patient your very best. Thanks for watching.